the power of video. Is video for you? Well, what we're saying this morning is maybe it is and maybe it's not. I'm so excited that I hit the right button and it worked. Um, we're going to take you through uh, this evolution of video and how it's moved from uh, the very early days, the, uh, the early 50s. And the reason I go back to the early 50s is because uh, before then I wasn't around, so I have no idea. So if you guys are trying to work out how old I am, you should be getting very close, okay? Uh, but video, as it was then, uh, it's not the same video that we have today. It was a very different product. Before the, uh, in the early 50s, you couldn't record programming. Uh, we had telecine, but it wasn't video as you knew, you knew it, and it wasn't accessible to the marketplace, and the consumer at home certainly didn't have it. That, took, that didn't come until about uh, midway through the, uh, the 1980s. But in those very early days, it was a terrific vehicle for advertisers. They were learning to use imagery. They, they had the ability to, uh, to translate uh, both products and change the attitudes of consumers. And then we saw this evolution of video. Oh, I, I apologise for the guy on the right with no moustache. Eh. Um, understand that in the very early days, uh, the newspapers, again, were your historical platform. They were not only a record of the events of the day, but they were also the major classified uh, broadcasters. In other words, if you wanted to find anything, it was in the newspaper. That's not the case today. Televised news, as I mentioned earlier, came to us at a specific time. Before that time of the day, before that program came to air, you were at the mercy of those gatekeepers. And the television stations were arrogant enough to love it. That's how they wanted it. And it wasn't until the arrival of the internet that we saw this massive change and shift in control, in opportunity. Suddenly, we all had access to the information everybody else had. And today we have an extraordinary uh, capacity to, de to demand anything we want and get it when we want. So we've seen a fantastic evolution of video. There you can see images of the newspapers and they created not only uh, perceptions, they created images that resonated. Notice they were talking about uh, brightening teeth. They had a blonde. Uh, in, in television, we know enough that we make the, the, the woman a brunette and the, the teeth look whiter. So it's infinitely more impactful. So there's interesting ways to use this uh, medium to get a better story. It is the dominating platform. And um, it's used around the world. We saw recently, only a couple of weeks ago, the Grammy Awards, one of the biggest television events. And yet, each and every artist spends their life, their marketing and their branding around video. It's about little stories that they present that showcase them and their persona and everything else that comes with it in a video form. Those video hits are what is driving music and fashion and everything else that goes with it. And uh, it not only has boosted sales for the, uh, the Rihannas, the Madonnas, and uh, the Lady Gagas of the world, but it's given them a chance to tell their story. And if they're good enough and powerful enough and smart enough and strategic enough, they can do it for 10, 20, 30 years. Madonna, or Miss Ciccone, is not the woman today that she was 20, 30 years ago. No, neither is Lady Gaga. And yet, through this medium of video, through this medium of strategic planning and branding, they keep evolving into something new. They're like chameleons. Video satisfies our human curiosity to see and to hear. 
And, I, and I'm always, always of the opinion that to see something helps you to believe it. And in television parlance, I was once told by a news director of mine, if we haven't got vision, it didn't happen, which I thought was extraordinary. You think about it now. Radio could tell you a story about something that just happened and you believed it. But until you had pictures on television, it wasn't newsworthy enough. And I had another television producer once who pulled me aside and said to me, mate, you're getting too excited about this story in Bangladesh where 30,000 people are being swept to their deaths. Unless you've got names and addresses, I'm not interested. So we have another problem. We've created a culture of localization. If it's one Australian dies in Bangladesh, it's the lead story in our papers and on our news. 30,000 people swept to their deaths and no Australians, and it doesn't matter. So we've got to be very careful about how we take in our information. But video is amazing. Formally and officially opened by the Premier of Victoria. 